Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and in truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS Ranch on Des Moines. Now you will come back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Habakkuk Wadash. And in this lesson, I want to um, go into a clip here, all right, or speak on a clip here that an elder, Apostle Gabar, had uh, played. And his lesson here that you see on the screen entitled, this is very, very, this is very, very, very disturbing. Right. And in this clip, uh, Al-Azhar, the head of um, the head of uh, Sakari. All right. He says, uh, uh, show me in the Bible where it says I cannot lie. And then he further mentions that bearing false witness is not lying. <laughs> All right. Which is which is madness, man. All right. And we have to be careful of. Uh, uh, saying things that aren't scriptural or just saying outrageous things <laughs> uh, just to prove a point, all right? Because it does say that we can't, uh, we aren't supposed to lie one to another in the scriptures, all right? And bearing false witness is lying. But in, uh, because he's just trying to prove a point, all right? He's gonna uh, try and justify it, man. All right, and we have to be uh, careful of not going after this same uh, the, the same example. All right. But without further ado, I want to go into these, these different points. All right. And I want to start off now. There is examples that we can find, which I am going to grab one an example of uh, a man after the most high's heart are right, lying uh, to a heathen. All right. Which was, uh, in his benefit in his situation, but really, uh, it's not a, it's not a good practice. All right. As it says in the book of, uh, Sirach, I'll go ahead and start off with that. All right. And especially like the Apostle Gabar had mentioned within the brotherhood. All right. Uh, we shouldn't be lying one to another. All right. And when Lord's will, I want to grab the example of where all right, Ananias and Sapphira. All right. They lie. All right. Um, to, I believe it was Peter. And the Lord uh, 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 killed him for that, man. All right. They lied into the Holy Spirit. All right. So it's not a good practice that should be exercised. But this is the book of Sirach, chapter seven. In verse uh, 12, it says, Devise not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Use not use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. So it's not a good practice, all right? And constantly lying, all right, we shouldn't have a uh, that reputation, all right, of just being a liar. It's not a good, it's not a good look, all right? And as we're going to read in various scriptures, really, that's a part of the old man. All right, of lying one to another and so on and so forth. All right, but to address the point, okay, uh, that he had mentioned, his first point is saying, show me in the Bible where it says, it can, uh, uh, says I cannot lie. Now, the scripture that the person that he was speaking to, he quoted this in the book of Deuteronomy. All right, Deuteronomy chapter five and verse uh, 20. It says, uh, Neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. All right. And he quoted the scripture, but then Al-Azhar had said, that's not lying. All right. Bearing false witness is lying. And there's so many scriptures that associate a false witness with a liar. All right. And let's grab a couple of them. False witness and then lie. All right, now this is the book of Proverbs 6 and 19. It says, A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that saw discord. Let me read up, Salakia. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse uh, 16. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. So these are things that the Lord hates. It says, A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. So the Lord doesn't like a lying tongue, man. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sowed discord among brethren. All right, so these are all things that the Lord hate. So this is why this is a practice that we shouldn't uh, 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 overindulge in, so to speak. All right, and when it comes down to the brother, the brotherhood, it's, it should be something that we shouldn't do. All right, period, man. 
All right, now maneuvering in this society, the scripture says, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. So there's times where uh, we use subtility, all right? And you may uh, uh, lie in certain situations, okay? Uh, using subtility, right? But once again, it's not a, a custom, a practice, all right, that uh, that we should um, uh, always uh, always be doing, man. All right, like a prime example, hey, you might be uh, working at a job, all right? And I might, I might need some time off for work, for uh for the uh the Passover, all right. I might tell them like, look, I'm going out of town to go visit some family, all right. I may use a little deceit in that matter, okay. Not finna tell them all the ins and outs, all right. Woman asking where you going, this and that and the third. I might not give her the full details and this and that and the third, right? Okay, so there's certain times where you may use uh subtility, all right. But that's understanding that within balance, man. It says, uh, this is the book of Proverbs chapter 14 and uh, verse 5, a faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A false witness, uh, Proverbs 19 and 5, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Proverbs 19 and 9, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. Right, so it associates, what, well, a false witness with lying, all right? Well, all those precepts, man, okay? So that's plain and simple, man. There's no deeper meaning and this and that and the third and being all extra man is, is, is as simple as that all right now let me grab another precept all right uh in the book of leviticus chapter 19 and this is straight to the point and this is out of the law all right all right but this is leviticus chapter 19 and verse uh, 11 it says, ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. All right, plain and simple, man. All right, so there it goes in the law. So my man says, show me in the Bible where it says I cannot lie. Well, we just read it in Leviticus 19 and 11 that we aren't supposed to be lying one to another. All right, plain and simple. All right, now let's grab this. Now, I do want to grab an example, all right, because... uh. Like I had mentioned, there's examples where men of the Lord uh, did lie to uh, uh, to heathen, all right, for their benefit, you know. Now, this is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 27 and verse 8. It says, And David and his men went up and invaded the Geshurites and the Gezerites and the Amalekites, for those nations were of old the inhabitants of the land, as thou goest to Shur, even unto the land of Egypt. And David smote the land and left neither man nor woman alive and took away the sheep and the oxen and the asses and the camels and the and the apparel and returned and came to Akish. And Akish said, Whither have ye made a road today? Right? So the king Akish, this heathen, he asked David, where was you at? All right, where'd you go? And David said, against the south of Judah and against the south of Jer Jerahamelites Jer and against the south of the Kenites. <laughs> and David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath. So here it is. David had went all right, and messed up the Geshurites, the Gezerites, and the Amalekites. But when the king asked him where he went, he told him completely different. He straight up lied to him. And I'll read in verse 11, and David said, neither man nor woman alive, and David saved neither man nor woman alive to bring tidings to Gath, saying, lest they should tell on us, saying, so did David, and so will he, will be his manner, all the while he dwelleth in the country of the Philistines. And Akish believed David, saying, he hath made his people Israel utterly to abhor him, therefore he shall be my servant forever. So he lied, all right to avoid uh dealing with more issues all right or being casted out of the land that um was given to him by a kish to dwell there man all right so he lied to this heathen in his uh favor but that was uh he used subtility man all right or should i say um he supplanted all right like it goes back to our forefather jacob to be a supplanter all right so in that situation all right that was uh uh he used that to his benefit man all right but this is not something that we should be exercising uh, uh, one another uh, within the bro brotherhood, man. We should be dealing up rightly and honestly with one uh, with one another. All right, this is the book of Acts, and that's why uh, even Apostle Gabar had mentioned in this lesson. All right, that you have to qualify these things, man. All right, can't just say certain things like this and not qualify it. All right, or at least mention different uh, scriptural examples of uh, of you know uh, so that the the listeners can be like, oh, okay, yeah, that did happen, or whatever the case may be, you know. Because somebody could uh, uh, run with that and take it the wrong way, all right? 
or move in a way that's not uh, pleasing in the sight of the Lord, man. But anyways, uh, this is the book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price his wife uh, also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. All right, so here it is. They sold their possessions, right? But then they said that they sold it for such and such for a certain amount, but they didn't really sell it for the amount that they actually uh, said that they sold it for, as we're going to read. All right, so they lied. But it says, uh, verse three, it says, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the Most High. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the spirit. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Right. So they got put. Uh, uh, well, as we'll keep reading. All right. But Ananias all right, got put to death because he lied, man. OK. He had other ulterior, whatever it was in his mind, other ulterior motives. OK. Whatever the case it may be, man, he lied about uh, uh, how much he actually sold his possession for when he didn't even have to lie about it. man. But he got put to death for it. And that's why I have mentioned that these things all right. Through the spirit have to be qualified, all right? Because you can sit there and say, whereas it say, uh, uh, I can't lie, and then somebody can be like, damn, we can go and lie, <laughs> all right? And then in the situation, a person get put to death, all right, for lying to the brotherhood or whatever the case may be, all right? So that's why these things have to be um, uh, qualified, man. Can't just willy nilly say these things, <laughs> all right? But it says, uh, verse uh, six, and the young men arose. Uh, and the young men arose and, and wound him up and carried him out and buried him. Verse seven. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in and Peter answered unto her. Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of him of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the spirit. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. All right. So there it goes right there. Okay. So we see the example of the word of the Lord put them to death for lying. Huh? All right. Now let me go to uh, the book of uh, Proverbs. Chapter 12. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 12 and verse uh, 22. It says, lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. All right. So this is uh, something that we want to be careful about doing. All right. Now, when it comes to, once again, like I mentioned, I keep reiterating the point when it comes down to the brotherhood, it shouldn't be so. All right. There shouldn't be a reason of lying one to another within the brotherhood, man. All right. You should be honest and dealing upright. And like I had mentioned, that's a part of the old man that as we come into this knowledge has to be put away. All right. This is the book of Colossians chapter three and verse nine. It says, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. So that's a part of the old man. All right. Lying about this, lying about that, trying to save face. All right. All right. Or, 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 or uh, trying to save your, your reputation. So you lie and do this and then the third man when it comes down to this brotherhood and shouldn't be so verse 10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him that's right man after the image of yahweh bashim yahweh shai man all right hey the scripture says uh uh the lord is not a man that he should lie <laughs> all right so then we should uh be after that same um uh image man be ye perfect as my father in heaven is uh is perfect man all right so we should be upfront with one uh, one another, man. Speaking truthfully one to another, man. Not justifying lying to one another. Okay. This is the book of uh, Ephesians chapter four, and we'll probably end it off with this. All right. Don't need to make this lesson uh, draw it out. This is the book of Ephesians chapter four and verse twenty-one. 
It says, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, and as the truth is in Yahweh Shai, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after the Most High is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. All right. So there it goes right there. So we should be tr speaking truth uh, one to another, man. All right. Having honesty with one another, man. OK. But, you know, I just wanted to grab uh, grab those different points through the spirit, man. All right. Lord's what I was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rekakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth with that. I'm going to say Shalom.